Hello everybody! Here is another video on RAID arrays. In this video, we are going to show you how to build a homemade RAID 5 system. What important things to consider when choosing computer parts for a RAID system, how to build the computer and configure a RAID array. Hello friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. All modern motherboards come equipped with an integrated RAID controller, and top models may have several such controllers on board. That's a different question, though, if such integrated controllers in consumer-class motherboards are ever used by an average user. Anyway, some motherboards do give a chance to set up a RAID array right inside your home PC. Watch this video for brief recommendations on building a RAID array on a home computer and a practical tutorial on assembling a PC for RAID. First of all, you need to decide on the purposes for which you want to build a RAID system on your computer and the RAID type you are going to use. You can learn more about RAID systems in our previous video, and I will give the link in the description. When you decide on the RAID type, choose a motherboard supporting such arrays and having a sufficient number of setup ports to work with the required number of disks. For our needs, we decided to build a configuration for RAID 5. We have chosen an SROG B365M Pro 4F motherboard with RAID 0, 1, 5, 10 support and 6 setup ports for hard disks. A spacious Cooler Master K380Ks with several slots for HDDs, an i5 9400F NAS generation Intel processor, 116GB 2400MHz system memory model by Kingston, and an NVIDIA 1060 graphics card. Now that we have got all the parts, let's start building the computer. The first step is to install the processor and the system memory onto the motherboard. It's not that difficult at all, just find out how to place it into the socket. If you are trying to assemble a computer for the first time, never try to push or force the processor into the socket if it doesn't fit. It never helps, but you can bend the pins or end up with a damaged processor. If you position the processor into the socket properly, it will fit into its place easily. On the processor, there is a triangular mark in the corner and a similar mark on the socket of your motherboard. Position the processor in such a way that the marks coincide. Also, on the edges of the processor there are small notches that are meant to fit into the corresponding elements on the socket. Install the processor and fix it with a latch. All right. The CPU is now in its proper place. The next step is applying the thermal paste and installing the processor's cooler. In my case, the stock cooler comes with a thermal paste on it, so I skip the paste part and just install the cooler. Push the lock and pins through the holes in the motherboard and secure them by turning. All coolers always come with an installation manual, so read it carefully before you stop, and there won't be any problems with installing the cooler. The final step is to connect the cooler to the motherboard. The plug at the end of the cable uh, coming from the fan should be inserted into the connector marked as CPU fan. The actual location of the connector depends on the particular motherboard model, but the marking is always the same. Now, insert the system memory into the memory slots and put the motherboard aside. To install the RAM modules, open the retention clips and put the model into the slot. Bear in mind that system memory models should be inserted only in a certain position. If the model won't fit into the slot, just try turning the model the other side. 
Insert in the models doesn't need much physical pressure, so don't force the model if it won't fit. The motherboard may also have special marking and numbers for slots. If you have two RAM models, place them into slots 1 and 2. If you have a single model, put it into slot 1. Put the motherboard aside and grab the case. Now we are going to install the power supply unit and do a bit of cable management. Here they are. Install the PCU into the designated place inside the case and secure it with the fastening screws which come supplied with the unit. Lay the cables behind the side panel on which the motherboard will be mounted and put them through these openings. The motherboard power should go into the upper hole and all the other cables into the lower hole. Look inside the motherboard box to find the I.O. shield. Insert it in the rear of your case according to the position of the motherboard. Do it from the inside of the case and push slightly until it clicks into place. Then have a look at how your motherboard fits into the case to find out where you should prepare additional mounting points. Usually these elements, also called standoff screws, come with a computer case. Screw them into the back panel according to how mounting holes are positioned on the motherboard. Now check the motherboard again to make sure the holes coincide with the standoff screws. Now fix it to the case with the screws that come supplied with the case. If you are not sure, check what screws fit the standoffs and only then screw them in. At this stage, it is time to connect the motherboard to the power supply unit. Connect the CPU power cable. It's got an 8-pin connector and this thick cable which delivers power to the motherboard. Now we are ready to connect the motherboard to the front panel of the case. At this stage, you may have some difficulties if you are building a computer for the first time, especially when you need to connect the front panel cables. But don't worry, all plugs and all motherboard connectors come with the corresponding markings. It's very easy. Put the audio plug into the audio connector. Just pay attention to the location of the connectors. And remember that if you are trying to put something in the wrong place, it just won't fit in. After that, insert the USB plug into USB 1 or USB 2 connector. And it doesn't matter which one you actually choose. Now it is time to connect the power and reset buttons as well as LED indicators. Read the motherboard manual to find their exact location. Electric polarity is usually marked on the motherboard and the plugs. Also, don't forget to connect the USB 3 cable. Everything is marked accordingly, too. Let's move on to adding hard disks. For our RAID system, we are going to use six Western Digital drives, 320 GB each. Install them, fix them with special crews, Plug power cables into corresponding connectors and use SATA cables to link the disks with the motherboard. As there are less power cables for all disks than we need, suitable power adapters are required. Finally, add the graphics card. Take the card and try position positioning it inside the case to see which part of the metal backplate, I.O. shield, should be removed. 
then just insert the card into the PCI Express slot and use a screw or two to secure the graphics card's metal retention bracket to the case so that it is fixed in place firmly. As the final step, plug the additional power cable into the corresponding connector on the graphics card. Congratulations! The computer is now assembled. Now that the computer is in one piece, you need to configure RAID in BIOS and install an operating system. Open BIOS, jump to Advanced mode, Storage Configuration, Intel Rapid Storage Technology. Select Create RAID Volume. Specify the name. Choose RAID Type. And select the disk you are going to use it with. Click Create Volume below. Save changes and exit. The last step is to install an operating system. This task requires a, a bootable USB drive or disk. You can learn how to create a bootable USB drive and use it to install an operating system by visiting our channel and watching special video tutorials. Check the link below. Nothing special here. Boot from the USB drive. Select your language. Next. Install. Enter the license key. Choose version of the operating system. Accept the license agreement. Choose the disk for installation. You can see that the computer detects one disk with a capacity of over 1 terabyte. This is our RAID system. Select it and click Next. The operating system is installed. When you open this PC, you will see the disk of more than 1 terabyte. Open its properties to find out that this is the RAID 5 array we have just created. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck!